That's the worst I've ever seen on any car. Jay, you've done it again. What the hell have you booked in this time round? I've never seen anything as bad as this over the entire car. I mean, it's ridiculous, it's so bad. And maybe on camera, it looks like it's raised above and actually gonna wash off. It's not washed yet. I can assure you when we wash this, that's staying there. That is actually really deep etching. So what could have caused this etching? What I've got is a panel behind me, which is gonna help me describe to you with some diagrams and some pens. I'm gonna draw some little pretty pictures to describe contamination and the consequences of some really bad contamination landed on your car. It depends on the chemical that's landed on the surface. It also depends on the hardness of the clear coat. It also depends on the freshness or the age of the clear coat. So is it fresh, new, or is it very old and weathered and hard? Any chemical that comes down onto that surface, the chemical could be alkalinic and it could be acidic. And there's a scale obviously there. Now, the etching depth severity varies on so hardness of the clear, that's gonna be one effect, the hardness of the clear coat. Then you've got the temperature. So you've got the temperature, temperature of the actual surface when it lands. Then the actual type of chemical that it is, because some, some are much less aggressive than others. You can have natural pollen, tree sap. You can have bird bombs bird poo lands on the surface. Then you can have man-made products like cement and lime and other chemicals. Then you've got solvent. So there's a lot of different types of chemicals in the world that can land on your surface. The harder the paint, the depth that it goes in will be less, generally. Now, harder paint is actually more dense paint. It's a higher density clear coat, which means it can't suck in really to the surface as much. So if the temperature's cold, you're almost certainly gonna have no etching. That's why bird poo, bug etching, bug splats always are much worse in the summer on a hot surface, so dark colors. The strength of the chemical is also a key factor here. So is it diluted down? Is the chemical raw and pure and land on the surface or has it been washed off quickly? I would say the moment a defect is or sort of half the thickness of the clear. Very difficult to measure. It takes a lot of experience. The easiest way I do this is I start sanding and polishing the surface and take a reading or multiple readings. If I've taken five microns off and there's still defects there, and I can still, they're still very deep, I would stop. Because I'm pretty certain I'm not gonna remove them or I'm gonna have to take off so much clear coat that it'll be gone, but then there's little clear coat left. So as you can imagine, when the customer dropped this car off, I was quite shocked. The description was that there was water droplets on a hot day and tons of tiny little insects, and they've landed in the water, drowned or something, and then the sun has baked them into this paint because I've never seen nothing like it. Ultimately, it's chemical etching, and you get bug splats and bird poo etching. It's acid or alkalines. It's a similar chemical burn to many other sort of environmental fallouts you get in the world. I'm sure a detailer would just turn this job away saying I, I can't touch it. It needs a repaint. What am I gonna do? Let's see what we can achieve. We've got nothing to lose with detailing methods instead of painting it. Of course, I have a spray booth over my shoulder and obviously I've been painting cars for a long, long time and I have all the equipment and it would make sense to repaint this, but I've got nothing to lose. Let's see if we can sand and polish this or maybe just polish it. Let's see if we can fix this. Hopefully you can see we have some reasonably deep etching marks in this rear panel. So I'm going to polish those away. Conventional methods with a machine polisher, some compound and pad. Now, what pad? Let's start with that. So if you was going to rotary polish, I would say that's a great pad, the purple foam wall pad. Quite a long pile there, more suitable to a rotary machine than a dual action machine. Quick tip, 
the fibers flop around when it's on an orbital machine. When it's on a rotary, they spin in one direction. So that would be my preferred rotary pad for heavy hitting. But we do have another pad. There's been times when I've used the low lint pad, and it's a very different fiber, and it's gave me a cleaner cut. What do I say about cleaner cut? It leaves, it leaves me less micro marring, so it's a slightly better finish, but very similar cutting ability. Shorter fiber, and you may even think that looks very similar to a, a microfiber pad, which it does. You can see there, the construction. Now, a microfiber pad would be more of a dual action random water polisher. This would be more on a rotary, but because that's short fiber, you could use this on a dual action as well. The actual pad I'm gonna use is the Udo pad, the micro wall pad. Very short fibers, which means you can use it on a rotary or a dual action machine because the fibers are so short. So it has a similar sort of characteristics to a microfiber, but it has more of a cutting ability of wall. So my preferred choice today, I'm gonna to use the Udos 51E with a micro wall pad. You can see this is a slightly used pad. It's not quite as clean, but it's perfectly fine. We've been using these pads. That one, you can see the more defined groove lines in there. I'm gonna use it in rotary mode and remove probably 89% of the defects. And then I'm gonna switch this down to a small orbit. Probably gonna go P1, I'm gonna go 12 mil probably, just to give me a bit of clarity. Cause obviously you should know that with any rotary action, you are going to induce buffer lines, more so the wall pad and the heavy hit compound. Start slow and then gradually increase the speed. Wipe the compound off. The purpose is just to inspect the work. If it's in a comparison of the 50-50, then I use alcohol. Let's give that a good alcohol wipe. So, you can see some lovely holograms. When I look at my flat light source, I'm going to probably have to pinpoint, there is some defects to the right hand side. It's very shallow. Now, so this would be the perfect time to switch into DA mode because I can stick with that same pad and the same combination of compound. P1 mode, which is a 12 mil orbit. We've got nothing to lose. We can always turn the modes up to a higher cut level in a moment. It's just a sort of demonstration of the versatility of the Udos 51E and you have so many choices. Alcohol white. It's a quick flip of the cloth to dry. Then we inspect the finish. Yep, I'm happy with that. So what I'm gonna do now is, there's a couple little smudge marks. I can tell that's me the way I wiped. So let's unmask. I'll leave the compound line there because it makes it very easy to focus on, to be able to see the difference. It gives you some sort of visual clue. All that's left is now for that camera to come round up close to show you the results. Sam, my forearms are probably bigger than your biceps. I don't even do any exercise. Yeah. You might just start weight training again. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Now my belly's bigger than anything. <laughs> uh. Ready? 
What was I saying? So guys, as you've seen, stunning results with the Udos 51E, the micro wall pad in rotary mode, then into a dual action mode. So I'm going to polish the rest of the car with the same method. There is a couple of panels that look very bad for condition. I'm certain they're not going to polish. If I can't polish them, I'm gonna go with a very unusual, let's say unorthodox method. You need to stay tuned to see that method. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that bell. I'm Kelly Harris, and goodbye.